I'm Sherry Bosher reporting for Global Medical News Network at the annual UCSF Osteoporosis Meeting. With the obesity epidemic, more and more people are having bariatric surgery, which can be beneficial in many ways, but Dr. Ann Schaefer says it increases the risk for bone loss. The extent of bone losses is um, impressive, at least based on the studies that have been done with the imaging techniques that have been used. So to date, all of the published literature about the effects of bariatric surgery on bone health have used DEXA. DEXA or calcaneal ultrasound. And while DEXA is indeed the standard method for assessing bone mineral density, it is problematic in the setting of obesity and marked weight loss. Despite those shortcomings, we do still have data based on DEXA. And what that data in the literature shows to date is that in the six, nine, 12 months following gastric bypass, there can be decreases in bone mineral density in the seven to 10% range. The bone mineral density losses are seen more at the hip than at the spine, um, but they're seen consistently in the small studies that have been done. The extent of bone mineral density that's been observed in the studies published to date is impressive because it's on par with the amount of bone loss that may be seen in the first five years after menopause in some women. Well, I, I emphasize to, uh, to my patients and encourage others to reassure their patients that gastric bypass surgery and other bariatric procedures are very effective. They're very effective at, at um, marked and, and sustained weight loss and improvements in comorbidities. But what I say is that we need to make sure we're doing everything we can in order to prevent long-term potential complications, including micro and macronutrient deficiencies, and then related effects like those on bone health. I emphasize that we want to make sure that we can take care of all parts of their body and, uh, and keep them healthy in the post-operative period. What I recommend we do is check a vitamin D level, a 25-hydroxy vitamin D level in the serum preoperatively, especially given how prevalent vitamin D deficiency is pre-op. Um, and we replete low levels so that people are going into surgery with calcium homeostasis that's, uh, um, that's relatively normal. Postoperatively, all patients should take a calcium and vitamin D supplement. And while the doses are, are to be determined, the Endocrine Society and others have recommended that a person take somewhere between 1,200 and 2,000 milligrams of calcium each day, ideally as calcium citrate, which is better absorbed than calcium carbonate when there's not gastric acid around. Vitamin D um, uh, daily requirements vary and are based on a number of factors, but many people will require between 800 and 2,000 international units daily, some patients even more. Vitamin D status can be assessed through that serum 25-hydroxyvitamin D um, test. Mm -hmm.